In this episode of Extra Duty, we're gonna be working with dogs, but not the dogs you're thinking of. These are the ones that the military works with. We're gonna be cleaning cages, we're gonna be feeding them, everything that the military working dogs do. And we have an extra treat for you. It might be me. Hey, what's going on? How's it going, Sergeant? I was doing pretty good. I'm excited to be working with you guys today. Yeah, absolutely. We're excited to have you. We got a lot in store for you, Sergeant. Fantastic. What are we going to be doing today? Um, today we're going to be doing a little bit of detection training out of a motor pool with some semi trucks. Uh, we have some bite year lined up for you to get bit by the dogs. Um, we also got a couple runs you Stop. can clean. You're going to attack me with a dog? Oh, absolutely, Sergeant. It's part of being a dog handler. So you guys get attacked by a dog every time. Every working dog handler is attacked by a dog. Every day. In for a dime, in for a dollar. All right. Uh, what else are we going to be doing? Um, outside detection training and bite work. Uh, we also have a few things you can help us clean up around here. Outside, we got a bunch of poop you can help pick up. And we've also got a couple kennels that need scrub. They're a little dirty. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> All right, go wow. ahead and take a seat. It's going to be the easiest way to get in. What you're going to do is you're going to point your toes. We will dress you. Make sure your toes are nice and pointed. This feels like those sumo suits that oh, uh, yeah. you can get back in the States. Go ahead and stand up, sir. Yeah. All right, what you're going to do is jump. So, I'm supposed to run away from the dog in this? Yeah. This is just like putting on a jacket. Well, this is just like mop gear. Yeah, it feels really good when it's hot outside. Oh, I'm sure. Good PT. Did you ever watch a Christmas story? No. All right, you ready? Good. Good. So how are you feeling right now? Tired. I, I run a lot, and, but the second that adrenaline hits you, you got a dog coming at you. It's got my heart thumping. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a workout. You don't realize it right when it's happening, but I tell you what, as soon as that dog comes off, you know that you're tired. Yeah, Freddy's a beast. Oh yes, he is. He, uh, he gave me some work. Absolutely. I gotta say, I think we, me and him have a, a bond now, a friendship that transcends species. I mean, we could always bring it back out and see. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think Freddy likes me that much. Uh, now we're going to head over to the 1345th Trans Yard, their uh, motor pool, to conduct some detection training. So what are we going to be doing now? Uh, now we're going to move into our detection training. Um, in this case, we're going to be planting different training aids that the dogs are trained to sniff and then give a response training to aids, their like, handlers. Like chew toys? Um, training aids, explosives, little narcotics. A little cone with peanut butter in it? Oh no, definitely not. <laughs> we actually, uh, it's funny you mentioned that, we actually train the dogs to avoid such objects like toys, food. We train them that it's really not okay for them to be interested in that while they're working and searching for various so, explosives and narcotics. 
Huh, so we're gonna have actual narcotics and actual explosives that we're hiding? Yes, we are. Fantastic. Real life training. All right, let's do this. All right. So it's almost like a game. Do, do you try to figure out ways to or beat the dog? Honestly, that's really what it is. Unless a dog's having problems where we need to work on their training, then it's really just trying to make it harder than it was the last day for the dog. So I need to find out how to beat the dog. Good luck. Challenge accepted. <laughs> All right. Let's go hide these aids. All right. I'm gonna try and hide it down here, down low. Really kind of work it in there. Just careful not to tear the packaging on it. Yeah. Let's see if I can beat the dog. So you're essentially guiding the dog. If you see, she'll do a free scan on her own. She'll walk around, she'll try and find things at like her nose level, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower. Um, you know, she'll sniff the basic things, like she'll sniff the border of these tires, the border of the Connex, and then she'll come back here. Here. And she'll expect me to help her out with stuff, but she didn't really, here. So you're here for guidance, and you're saying that these dogs have a great batting average. Yeah, they have to have a, a really good find rate. Um, on average, it's about 95%. Oh, wow. I, don't, I think I'm doing pretty good right now. She, she's kind of nearby and hasn't really, hasn't really figured out my spot yet. It's getting close. I'm feeling all right. I think I got a pretty good shot to She's right by it right now. She's right by it. Uh oh. Uh oh. What's the signal? Oh, as soon as she started sniffing, I could tell that she was on the other. Oh, yeah, I see. Oh, she wins. <laughs> it, so she gets the treat. <laughs> I lose. Well, today, Sullivan zero, dogs two. So, what about you? Where are you? Where are you going? I'm going to see if I can't go over here to these vehicles and see if I can catch one of them on one of these vehicles. All right, let's go. Wow, look at all these old vehicles. That is sneaky. I like it. So what's the idea right here? The, uh, the practicality behind this plant is essentially to cause as much damage to U.S. troops as possible. You know, if someone wanted to disarm and disable our U.S. troops, they're not gonna come out here and they're just gonna stick something outside the up armor. No, because they know that that's gonna absorb that blast, absorb that shrapnel. However, if you go ahead so and put it under the up armor, then you're just creating shrapnel, exactly. That is devious. So rather than it blowing up and smashing into the ground or just blowing up inside the cab, it shoots out, creating shrapnel and our people. Luckily, we got the dogs for the job. Absolutely. Dan, fourth. The reason that we're hanging back right now is because I don't want to be too close. I don't want to mess anything up. I want them to go through as fast as they actually go through when they're trying to find these aids. The last time when Diana beat me on that challenge, right, come. We were kind of in the way. Now they're going through breakneck speed. They are finding the stuff right now. Hup. Good. Hup. Good. Uh, right now what I'm trying to do, I can see that she's got a change of behavior about her in which she's trying to pinpoint it. So I'm trying to give her the best opportunity by herself to pinpoint it just so I don't put myself in harm's way. After about a minute, two minutes of giving her a chance to find it herself, I'll get in where she's showing that change of behavior, that area, 
and I'll help her detail a little bit, see if I can see any cracks or crevices that she's not necessarily hitting as well as she should she be. She knows it's up there. She does yeah. know it's up there. <laughs> Good, stay. Good girl. Good job, mamas. Come here. Good job. So this looks like it's the best part of the job. After she finds the aid, he gets to turn around and play with her, and that's her reward. They get to play with their dogs all the time, and that's how they train them. I'm kind of jealous right now. Now we're gonna move into spraying it down, making sure there's no dirt, no hair, no debris that's inside the kennels, whether it be feces, urine. After we spray it down, we're gonna go ahead and take scrub brushes and an approved disinfectant from the veterinarian, and we're going to scrub it down. Once we're sure that every aspect of it, I mean every aspect of it is scrubbed down, then we're gonna go ahead and rinse it off and squeegee it out so it's nice and dry for the dog to move back in. How excited are you about getting free labor right now? Uh, it means that's one less kennel that I have to do, so I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, future NCO, lead the way. All right, moving this way. So, now what you're gonna do, starting outside, you're going to spray down everything from this wall to this wall outside top bottom walls everything except the ceiling pretty much anywhere you see dirt dust hair feces urine even where you don't see it you're going to spray down i'll go ahead and take that set this over here for now how do i sound cool right now it's kind of hard to sound cool when you're spraying poop <laughs> well perfect i've never been cool so why to start now It actually ends up looking like soggy belly button lip. <laughs> we'll generally GI this thorough once a week. It's essentially to make sure that the dogs aren't getting sick, aren't getting any illnesses, make sure that they have a clean and sterile environment to live in. I'm a little bit surprised to find myself in a cage. Nice and thorough. Well, if I'm gonna do free labor, I might as well do it correctly. Might as well. But you get proficient at it, you get good at it, you start to look for key areas that are normally dirty. What's the next part? All right, the next part, we're gonna go ahead and take this out. Get your cleaning utensils here. Our disinfectant. You can go ahead and fill that bucket up a little bit. Probably about quarter to half away should be good. That should be good for this. All right. Now, everywhere that you sprayed, you're gonna scrub. This isn't so bad, but this right here is all this effort, all this attention to detail. I can blame on my mom. Thanks, mom. You made me the cage cleaner I am today. It's a very clean smell. You know, a lot of disinfectant smells like a nursing home. This smells like, it smells like dog shampoo. You're good. You really only need to go up to about the tile just to where the dog can jump up. Oh, no. <laughs> really not bad, not bad for a first time. So yeah, now we're gonna go ahead and grab the hose and spray it all down. So spraying it down is one of the more important parts about GIing the kennels. If you leave any of that soapiness or that residue, then when the dog sits down or lays down in it, it can cause uh, an illness which is called scrotal dermatitis. It's actually kind of relaxing. It's very woo-saw to sit here and 
clean all this down. This is by far the most important part when it comes to GEIing the kennels. The simple reason is you want to make sure you get physically as much water off the ground as possible. If any massive amount of water are left on the ground, then it can lead to dog's fur getting wet. It can lead to clumping and what are called hot spots where the fur will actually start falling off and they'll get skin diseases. It can lead again to scrotal dermatitis. It can also make their pads the, on the bottom of their feet get irritated. They can rub them raw and that, that's a really bad one just because it takes the dogs out for about a week to heal. I, I hear you, buddy. I hear you, buddy. You could do it better than I could, but I'm trying. Ooh, something smells right. Yeah, that's uh, one of the dogs leaving a present. Oh, presents. I love presents. Well, I guess you get to clean it. <laughs> well, uh, I'm assuming I'm not grabbing it with my hands. No, of course not. Um, it's funny. This is the epic dog. We actually need a poop sample for the vet. So, you're going to go ahead and grab it with this fancy little bat. I'm doing this for all the vets out there. Of course. Alright, so what you want to do, push that closed and put the bar back in. Just in case, now he can't get out. I'm glad he didn't foam rush me. Thank you, Augie, for your gift. Yeah. I almost missed Christmas coming on this tour. Luckily, Augie was there in a pinch to give me a present. Oh. Once you get as much as possible, just fold it over on itself and tie it up. Oh, awesome. That's a full bag. Careful with thin bags, too. <laughs> well done, Augie. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm going to wash my hands real quick. <laughs> What's next on the agenda? Well, next we have our last end of day checklist that we need to do and the first thing on that would be feeding. Oh, perfect. He just got empty. Let's fill him back up again. All right. Wait. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our pans here. All right. You're going to set them right over there on that. I can do that. Uh, make sure you have six pans because we have six dogs we need to feed. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, six. So now we're going to prep the food. Um, right. right here we have our feed chart, which is each dog, how much food they get, I'm sorry, how much food they get in the AM and PM. Then we track how much food they've eaten that day. Four being they've eaten all their food. Three being they ate most of it. Two, they ate about half of it. One, they just took a few bites of it. Just to make sure that we're keeping them on the right amount of food for the right weight range that they need to be in. And lastly, all the way over here, we have what medications they're on. So Ogie, right here, is on seven milliliters of a lactulose solution. Oh, Ogie, the one that I just cleaned up after. Exactly. This helps him poop. I can tell. <laughs> so, first thing you're going to do, there should be two scoops in there. Yes. There should be a smaller one and a larger one. All right. The smaller one is a half cup. The larger one is one cup. So, we're going to go down this since it's in the PM right now. Okay. And we're going to fill up these dogs' bowls according to how much food they get. Okay. So, so for the first one, Jerry. He gets one big scoop. It's going to be one scoop. Make sure it's nice and leveled off. And then you just put it in the pan. And that's done for Jerry. Next, you're gonna stack on top. I'll show you why when we get back in there. Okay. It's gonna be Laura. She gets one and a half. Next is Diana. Now, Diana's got a brown coloring here because she gets the metabolic food. So she's going to get one and a half cups of metabolic food and half a cup of active diet. Okay. So we'll start with the active diet. I might be doing it backwards. And then one and a half of the rancid garbage. The rancid broccoli. Don't 
don't worry, the smell will be on your hands when you leave. <laughs> so I won't be able to get rid of this smell for the rest of the day? Not for the rest of the day. I imagine you guys go through a lot of soap after fishing time. We definitely go through a lot of soap. Awesome, now we've got all our food pants. We're gonna stack this one on top, but don't forget that this is Ogie. Yes. Freddy can't get Ogie, Ogie's medication. So, what you're gonna do is I'm gonna have you carry those three. Okay. I'm gonna carry these three and we're gonna walk right back here to the kennels. Sounds good. does it for us here at the kennels. As you can see, it's not all just fun and playing with dogs. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it. I hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching.